Hey everyone, I am off to go camping this weekend on Friday, September, or I'm sorry, October 16th, up to the, uh, the north woods of Wisconsin. So this will be my last camping trip of the year, and then I'll put Betty into storage. Oh yeah, um, I've learned that apparently you're supposed to name your campers, so I've named my camper Betty after my mother-in-law, great person, uh, miss her a lot. And so I'm going to name my tow vehicle Sam after my mother, not Samantha, but uh, Joan. And everybody says, well, why is she named Sam when her real name is Joan? And apparently uh, the story goes when she was a baby, she had the grip of Samson. And so they called her Sam. And uh, I didn't know she was Joan until I was like in seventh grade. So anyway, uh, that's the story of uh, naming of my tow vehicle and my camper. I am heading up today to Forgotten Fire Winery in Peshtigo, Wisconsin. It's called Forgotten Fire because uh, on the same day of the Chicago Fire, back in whenever, 1800 and something, there was the Peshtigo, Peshtigo Wisconsin Fire, which was actually bigger and I think even killed more people. Uh, but it's forgotten because it was clearly overshadowed by the Chicago Fire. So that's a harvest host. I'm uh, going to spend the night there, and then I'm going to shoot over to um, the Line and Kugel Brewery in Chippewa Falls. So if you know Wisconsin, kind of got the hand. Here is roughly where Forgotten Fire is, and, and over here is where Line and Kugel Brewery is. Full disclosure, I've worked for Miller Brewing Company, then Miller Coors, now Molson Coors Beverage Company for 23 years. We have owned Lion Kugel Brewing Company all that time. I've been there a couple of times, but uh, it's a great place. And I'm looking forward to uh, having a few beers and also very excited to see my daughter who's going to be driving over from Minneapolis. So I'm coming up from southeastern Wisconsin. She's going to be driving across from Minneapolis and we're going to meet at the Lion Kugel Brewery and then we're going to camp. So excited about that, but a little bit nervous. It is supposed to be cold, uh, below freezing. I have never camped in below freezing weather. And uh, while it's not going to be too much below freezing tonight or tomorrow, on Sunday night, it's supposed to get down to 23 degrees. And I'm a little bit worried about the water tanks freezing. I may on Sunday afternoon actually winterize. I've got the fluid to do that. I may winterize on the fly. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm uh, doing this weekend. I'll record some video when we get up to the uh, the winery. I'll show you guys what it's like. And then we'll head over to Chippewa Falls and check out the brewery, which again is, uh, is a great place. It should be a good time. So uh, see you in a bit. Thanks. A little narrow, but not bad. I'm going to give them a ring and uh, see where they want me to uh, camp. All right, I don't know if you uh, can see this very well. It is raining cats and dogs. Luckily, I'm on a parking lot. I don't really have to do much to set up. And uh, but I did that in the rain, I couldn't film it because it was too cold and too wet. I'm in the tab now, and uh, I just heard the uh, tornado sirens go off, so yeah, and it's starting out so good, but uh, it's not cold in here yet. I've just uh, fired up the Aldi, let me show you the settings on that, and then I'm gonna go in and have something to drink. All right, so here's the Aldi, I turned it on. Got uh, the propane going, if you can see that. I have it set for 64. It's, uh, well, the Aldi says it's 62 in here. My thermometer up here says uh, almost 59. So I don't know what is right, but I'm hoping that Aldi kicks in while I'm having, uh, having a couple of glasses of wine or some cider. I'm gonna go get uh, something to drink and show you the forgotten uh, fire winery, hopefully. Um, I can do that, but not maybe from the outside because I'm going to run across the parking lot. So here I am in the Forgotten Fire Winery. 
started by Lindsay and Joe Callow back in 2011. They started with seven wines. They now have over 30 wines and a number of ciders. And I have a confession to make. I had my seven sampling tasting before I started to film. I was so excited and they were all so good. So here's a peek at the Forgotten Fire Winery. And of course, I will link to it below. No doubt if I drink this whole bottle, I'm going to be schnockered because I haven't had a lot to eat today. But um, I'm just walking outside to my camper, so who really cares, right? So, cheers. Oh, look at this. I got this uh, cool little glass. Forgotten fire. There you go. All right. So, I'm a little bit uh, inebriated, even though I've only had, like, seven little tastings and a half a bottle of wine but i haven't really had much to eat today check this out this is a growler of cider it's so good it's pumpkin spice cider got a pino grigio and uh, what is this called naked rack cranberry and raspberry you gotta like the names uh, this is a pretty cool place i'd highly recommend it for anybody and the people are really nice so things are going okay the weather totally sucks i'll let you know how things go tomorrow morning and see how the night goes Well, good morning everyone. It is 541. Sun's not up, but I couldn't sleep anymore. The uh, Aldi heat system worked terrific last night. Kept the whole camper at around 65, which is exactly where I set it. It uh, got down to about 30 last night. A little bit below freezing. Not too worried about anything freezing, really, because it was warm in here. And I did pour some of uh, that antifreeze stuff down into the gray and the black tank, <clears throat> so I think I'm good there. Right now it's snowing in Chippewa Falls where I'm going, uh, according to uh, my phone app. However, it's still supposed to get up to 60 degrees there. So when you're in the north woods this time of year, big changes in temperature. Going to get on the road pretty soon here, as soon as it, get, as, soon as it gets light. And uh, it's about a three and a half hour drive to Chippewa Falls where I'm going to meet my daughter and go on a brewery tour. Talk well, to I've taken off getting gas and uh interesting experience this morning everything was froze yep the uh the car was froze shut couldn't get the tailgate down a bit and force it open but hey all good now and on my way to chippewa falls but uh cold weather camping freezing rain something else Well, after a rather thrilling ride, I'm here at the Leinenkugel Lodge. Why don't we uh, head inside and check it out?
place is really cool. This is a great, great lodge. Oh, I got one of those paddles. place. It's amazing. <laughs> this is really cool. The tour costs about 10 bucks a person. It's all outside because of COVID-19. You can't take videos, but you can take pictures. They do a really nice job talking about the family history, when it was established, who established the brewery, and about the family, how they evolved over time. They show you the stables, which are original. They still delivered beer by horse up until 1945. It was actually first called the Spring Brewery because of the spring they found, the Big Eddie they called it. That's the oldest building on the property, dates back to 1867. And of course, afterwards, I got to enjoy a beer with my daughter. It was all a good time. And with the brewery tour, we drove about 40 minutes north along the Chippewa River from Chippewa Falls to Brunette Island State Park. Unfortunately, I lost a fair amount of footage and it was a beautiful ride along the Chippewa River. Here you can see the aerial view of the park. There is a north and a southern campground. The southern campground is mainly for RVs, whereas the northern campground is more primitive, although there are places there where you can get small RVs. It's a much better campground in my opinion. Here you can see the southern campground where it's sort of a fishbowl type of thing, whereas the northern campground, the sites are primitive and every site backs up to water. It is really pretty. Uh, I'm going to try to camp there with my smaller RV. Here you can see the white line that traces the main hiking trail. Casey and I did that on Sunday, um, but I'm going to skip ahead to Sunday night because I lost a lot of footage. So, I've got a decision to make today. It's pretty cold out. Um, it is going to get to about 25 tonight. And I have a choice. I can either take off and drive home. I could drive over to the dump station now and dump all my tanks and winterize because I do have the fluid and then dry camp the rest of the night. Just bring my, my uh, camper back to the site. Or I could ride it out. Um, and uh, hope that the radiant heat from the camper will keep the tanks warm enough to not freeze. I'm actually not worried about the tanks freezing because I am worried a little bit about the line. Other folks have said that, yeah, they've camped at uh, that type of temperature and nothing ever froze up on them. So I think I'm going to give that a try because it's already about 3 o'clock and... Um, Temperature is dropping and it's windy and cold and I'm actually really comfortable inside the tab. So I'm going to I'm going to ride it out. I'm going to let you guys know tomorrow how this all works out. Morning everyone. Today is Monday, October 19th. And it's cold outside. It got down to about 25 degrees last night. I was wor worried that uh, things were going to freeze up a little bit. So I got up every couple of hours, turned the water on. Uh, Quite honestly, with the uh, the radiant heat in here from the Aldi, um, nothing froze. 
other than my eggs are a little bit cold. So we're going to have some breakfast, then I think I'm going to spend some time cleaning up the, uh, the tab, because this is the last day of camping, and then I'm going to go for a little hike in the cold, and then head on home. So uh, it's a great trip, a little colder than I was uh, anticipating, but hey, that's camping. You know, this trip certainly had its challenges with rain and sleet and ice and snow, but got to spend some quality time with my daughter, been to a couple of cool places, and then when you step out of your camper and this is what you see, well, it's certainly all worthwhile. <laughs>